several minutes often differentiate the leading riders in cycling's three grand tours, which also include the Tour de France and Giro d'Italia. But the 84 Vuelta wasn't so straightforward. After 19 stages, comprising of three time trials and 13 gut busting mountain climbs, France's Eric Caratou and home favorite Alberto Fernandez were practically inseparable. On the final day of racing, the stage was set for the closest ever finish in a major cycling race. An unlikely leader, Caratou held a 36 second lead over the Spaniard ahead of the final time trial. The Frenchman rode first and waited on as Fernandez ate away at his advantage. In an era before sophisticated timing systems, a nail biting delay ensued. It proved to be too little too late for Fernandez. Caratou, phenomenal over the climbs throughout the race, held on to claim an historic victory, the only Grand Tour win of his career. I lost 30 seconds in the time trial but it took me a while to know that I had won, Caratou said in an interview with the Vuelta website earlier this year. It was raining at the end of the stage and, had I known I had such little margin, I would have taken more risks and I could have fallen. Luck was on my side. Read, why a race through Spain started in France an unlikely victor if the race was extraordinary, the circumstances around Caratua's victory are equally remarkable. Just two years into his professional cycling career, Caratua had no intentions of entering La Vuelta that year. After late pressure from organizers, however, his skill team entered. Caratou abandoned a break with his family in the south of France and had a matter of days to get race ready. Four days before the start, while I was working in the vineyard, my grandmother told me that the sports manager, Christian Rumiao, was on the phone, the Frenchman recalls. Read, Miguel Indurain, the cyclist from another planet I had to catch a train to join the team in Geneva, and then a plane to get to Malaga. Riding without support from team members in the mountains, Caratou defied all expectations, including his own. I participated in 12 Tours de France, my 12th was in 1989, but La Vuelta is the best memory of my career as I didn't win it with a surprise escape, but in the mountains. For me, finishing second in La Vuelta a España when I had just become a professional would have been a huge victory. An untimely tragedy Fernandez's life took a tragic turn later that year. The Spaniard and, and his wife were killed in a car accident that December. A month short of his 30th birthday, the 1984 La Vuelta proved to be the last major race of Fernandez's career and the closest he came to winning a Grand Tour. That deeply affected me, says Caratou. Read, meet cycling's podium girls, and men, I never had any problems with him. He was a loyal rival and even congratulated me at the finish line. I had more problems with the spectators who preferred a Spanish rider to win. Since 1985, the highest part of La Vuelta has been dedicated to Fernandez, which this year was the finish line of the 15th stage in Sierra Nevada. Life out the saddle for Caratou, the 1984 Vuelta was the only Grand Tour victory of his career although he did win the French Road Race Championships in 1988 and 1989. Since retiring from cycling in 1994, his life is less about seconds and enjoying more leisurely pursuits. Read, the changing colors of the Vuelta jersey nowadays, the 57-year-old can be found cultivating a small patch of land in the shadows of Mont Ventoux, one of cycling's most iconic climbs in the south of France. Here he helps grow the grapes for his own wine label, QV Eric Caratou is described as a dark red with a spicy finish, and also rents out a villa to holiday goers. Visit for more bikes are available for guests to hire, and Caratou is happy taking holiday goers on tours of the local area. No doubt he has a cycling story or two to share on the way.